thank you very much. First of all, thank you to the Bilkent University for this uh, opportunity to present this paper. Uh, this is the first time we are presenting these results, so we really appreciate the comments. The paper is about uh, focusing on the diversification decision of the Turkish commercial banks in Turkey and the effect of this decision on their profitability and their riskiness. The first idea we get is during our PhD seminar. Like Başak, I am also very happy because today I have also my lecturers from the undergrad degree here and my PhD students uh, here as well. During our PhD seminar, we were discussing a paper of Acharya et al. And the paper was about focus and diversification decisions and the effect of these decisions on the riskiness and the profitability of the banks. So we decided with my co-author actually, Sezad Danışoğlu, Sezad Danışoğlu uh, what about if we study something like this in Turkey, what kind of results we find? Uh, we decided to more, fo more focus on the ownership structure of the banks, however. So we are more interested in the different ownership structures of the banks and how those different three kinds of banks uh, focus on diversification decision on their assets and the liabilities changes their profitabilities and the risk. We all know that we were even talking about it during the morning that the regulators, so banking regulations, limit risk taking by banks. Uh, for example, the Basel framework, all three of them, try to tie the capital adequacy to the riskiness of the asset portfolio. So it's increased. So according to the modern portfolio theory, it suggests that banks should hold diversified asset portfolios. So if they diversify their asset portfolios, it's going to decrease the unsystematic risk in the portfolio so that it's going to maintain the return but decrease the risk so it's better for the banks to diversify their portfolios as well. However, we also know that in the financial intermediation theory, it suggests that banks may benefit from focused asset portfolios, especially their loan portfolios. Banks are unique in a sense that they have a unique position to produce private information about their borrowers. So because they have repeated contracts with those loan takers, they have a better information compared to the outsiders related to the credit worthiness of those borrowers, basically. So they are, this better information should lead to better risk and return trade-off. So it's better for the banks to focus instead of diversify their portfolio if they want to have a better risk return trade-off. Uh, if you look at the earlier theoretical framework, we're very simply if I go over them. Uh, one group says that they follow the uh, portfolio theory and says that the banks should hold well-diversified portfolios. So the diversified loan portfolios are going to decrease the riskiness of the banks, and this decreased risk uh, causes a lower cost in those banks to monitor the borrowers and then to produce information and to provide certification. So it is better for them to have the diversified portfolios. It is going to decrease their uh, costs and it's going to decrease their riskiness. Uh, on the other hand of the literature, they also say that this time the banks should have specialized or the focused portfolios in order to be efficient in information production. So if they have higher diversification and lower risk, it may decrease their incentive to monitor and to produce information. It is very difficult to follow so many loan takers. But if they concentrate on the single industry, they may have a better information related to that single industry so that it will be better for them, easier for them, to control their riskiness, especially to control the credit riskiness of those borrowers. And of course, they will also get rid of the cost of uh, increasing or cost of producing new information related to the new industries that they extend loans. If they focus on a single industry or a a certain number of industries, they will have the certain knowledge about that and they will have the lower costs. Again, if you look at the empirical evidence in the literature, there are some papers that support both kinds of both views. Uh, the first view actually that the first papers, the group of papers actually shows that the diversification leads to the reduced bank profits, higher costs, so increased exchange rate, and the political 
risk. On the other hand, the next group says that this diversification decreases the unsystematic risk and reduced cost of bankrupt. So one of them says that, okay, focus, it is better. The other one says that diversify, it is better for the bank's risk and profitability. So our research question basically looks at how this focus decision or diversification decision affect the profitability and risk-taking behavior of Turkish commercial banks. So I think this is the first paper in this workshop today that actually looks at the Turkish data. So we worked with 32 commercial banks. Uh, four of them are the state-owned, so we also include the bank in, bank in the day savings deposit insurance fund is a state bank. We have 11 domestic private banks and 17 foreign private banks in our sample. The sample period is quarterly, so it is from the fourth quarter of 2002 to the third quarter of 2000. 13. The data is quarterly and the main source of the data is the Turkish Banking Association website. We use both, we actually use balance sheets, income statement and all the notes disclosed for those balance sheets and the income statements. Uh, we will discuss one of our variables is related to the geographic focus and for calculating of this geographical focus area we need the branch data. So we again downloaded the data related to the branches of the banks from the Turkish Banking Association of Turkey. Uh, we would love to go back from 2002, but the data structurally changed before 2002, so it is almost impossible to get the same kind of information related to the banks in Turkey before 2002 and after 2002. Uh, as focus variables, we use classical Horfendal Horschman indices and we calculated the Horfendal Horschman indices for five different focus groups. The first focus group is the asset focus. So we have four different asset portfolios. We generalize and make them uh, grouped into four different portfolios of the assets part of the balance sheet of the Turkish commercial banks. So we have the first portfolio is for the investment portfolio, then the loan portfolios. The third one is the cash and cash equivalents, and the other Assets. In all these Hervindal Her uh, and Horschman indices, as the number increases, the bank becomes more focused. So if it is the index, index is one, it means that basically the bank is only investing all its money or just having just one single group of uh, asset portfolio, just investing loans, just having loans, or just having the investment portfolio. Okay? So as the number increases, the focus increases as the number decreases, the focus decreases, and it is the same for all the, the other four uh, focus variables as well. We also have a loan focus, and we basically look at the non-specialized loans. This is the largest portion of the loan portfolio uh, of the Turkish commercial banks, and we have find nine different sub-portfolios in this loan group, discount loans, export, import, the loans given to the financial sector, international loans given to the international borrowers, the consumers, credit cards, precious metal industries, and the others. The liability portfolio of the banks grouped into five different sub-portfolios. The deposits, the borrowed funds, funds from, borrowed from the money markets, money market instruments, the bonds issued, and the derivatives and the other liabilities. The deposit focus, we look at the deposit portfolios and how they are subgrouped in different sub-portfolios. We have the savings, including the demand deposits and the time deposits, the foreign currencies, the government institutions deposits in the banks, the commercial deposits, the deposits of other institutions, institutional investors, the precious metals industries deposits and the other banks deposits in the banking sector. Uh, this is an interesting one, and we, nowadays we are struggling with actually this variable because Turkish Banking Association changed the way they disclosed this uh, variable, unfortunately. So we are looking at how dispersed the branches are for the commercial banks. Okay? Again, if we are talking about one, for example, it, it means that this bank only has one branch in one city. So higher the number, more focused the Turk bank is in a one city or a one smaller 
area. So higher the value, more focused the bank is, lower the value, it means that it is more dispersed throughout the Turkey. So it has branches all over Turkey in different 81 cities of Turkey, basically, we are talking about. Uh, as profitability measures, we decided to use two different kinds of measures. Usually, return on assets mostly applied in the literature as a measure of performance. So this is an accounting uh, measure, and it is basically the net income divided by the total assets. Uh, we decided also to look at the performance of the banks from their definition or the ongoing operations. So the bank's main job is to get the deposit and extend the loans, isn't it? So the mainstream of the operations is coming from their interest activities, interest incomes and interest expenses. So we want to see how much they earn from their interest-related activities. So the net income, net interest margin is the net interest income. So it is the net interest income minus the interest expense divided by the total assets. Basically, the difference between these two variables is the fee-generating activities. Okay, net interest margin concentrates more on the interest-generating activities of the banks, but the return on asset basically looks at the general profitability of the banks in an accounting sense. We started this paper in summer 2013. Uh, we, we just estimated it with a different methodology at that time. Then this, in summer 2014, we changed our data set. So we found new information related to the risk measures. We decided to use these new risk measures, so we changed everything into summer 2014. That's the reason, actually, we are just presenting it for the first time. Before, with the old version, we have already presented it twice, but this is the first time with these new variables and the new estimation methodology. We look at four different risk groups. One of them is the, the first one is the credit risk. It's very important for the banking sector. So we are looking at the credit risk and we measure it as a ratio of non-performing loans to the total assets. We always uh, use the ratio and we always use the total assets as a denominator. The only difference is the capital adequacy ratio. It's uh, total equity divided by risk-weighted assets. Banks, they disclose themselves their capital adequacy ratio that's calculated like this. So in the footnotes to their financial tables, they disclose the total equity and they disclose an amount of risk-weighted assets. We use that value to calculate the capital adequacy ratio for this uh, research, basically. The foreign exchange risk <coughs> is the foreign exchange gap. So the difference between the foreign exchange denominated assets minus liabilities divided by, again, total assets. We just use the absolute values to measure that risk. So as this gap increases, doesn't matter even on the positive side or the negative side, we accept that the bank's riskiness is increasing. So its vulnerability to the changes in the foreign exchange rate is increasing. The last risk measure is the interest and the liquidity risk component. This component is estimated by using a principal component analysis. It actually includes four different kinds of risk measures. There are two liquidity risk measures and two interest rate risk measures in it. The liquidity risk measures are defined as the liquid assets minus liquid liabilities, so liquidity gap divided by the total assets. And we have the liquidity gap both for the short term and for the long term. So the short-term liquid assets minus short-term liquid liabilities divided by total assets, and long-term uh, liquid assets minus long-term liquid liabilities divided by total assets. We have the same logic for the interest rate risk. Uh, again, we have the rate-sensitive assets and rate-sensitive liabilities divided by total assets, so it's the interest rate gap we are talking about. Again, we have both short-term and the long-term. So we have uh, short-term rate-sensitive assets minus rate-sensitive liabilities divided by total assets, and we also have it for the long term. Like in the foreign exchange rate risk, we again use the absolute values. So as this gap increases, doesn't matter positive or the negative side, the riskiness or the vulnerability of 
bank is increasing to the liquidity and the interest rate changes. Yes, please. In your data set, do you have maturity data? This gets at uh, liquidity maturity transformation, but is there more accurate, uh, precise measurements? They have the values for different maturity buckets. Okay, for zero, for example, uh, maturity interest, for three months maturity interest, uh, 90 days, 19 to 30 days, 90 days, and one year, and it goes on like this. And two years, yeah. three years. No, not two years, three years, until 15 years, five, and, then and then beyond five. five. Okay, so it's still no, not that detailed. But okay. still better, better than, than it used to be available. So we use the absolute values of these four different ratios and calculated a, a principal component and use this component to uh, proxy or to measure these risk values, the risk, risk components. Not surprisingly, as a control variable, we use the natural logarithm of total assets, like in this literature, like all other empirical work. And as we are more interested in the bank ownership and the reaction of the different kinds of banks to these uh, focus decisions and reaction of these different banks focus decisions on their profitability and the riskiness, we also control for their ownership. And in our group, we have three different groups, the state banks, domestic private banks, and the foreign private banks. We use uh, dynamic panel data, actually, Arizona Bones dynamic panel estimations as used in these calculations. We control for the risk about by using robust standard errors as well. And just for the sake of place, we haven't disclosed the legs of the independent, uh, dependent variables, but they are significant, as expected, because these are ratios we're talking about, a bit of quarterly data. Now, if you look at the tables, basically our model is estimating with a constant, and this asset focus without any dummy shows the asset focus of the state banks. This is the base group, is the state banks in our estimation. We have for different focus variables, different estimations. So we also have this focus variable, so asset focus times the private bank dummy, domestic bank dummy. Then we have the focus variable times the foreign bank dummy. So in our estimations, we also control for different risk groups that we are going to examine. And we also look at, uh, we also control for the size of the banks as well. So these are the results for the return on assets. And these are the results for the net interest margin. They are not exactly the same, interestingly, but we, we kind of find a way to simplify the situation and just to make it easier to explain. Uh, these are the signs, especially the focus variable signs. For the state banks, domestic banks, and the foreign banks, for the return on asset as a performance measure and the net interest margin as a performance measure. Now, for example, for the asset focus, it shows that the state bank's asset focus variable has a positive significant sign, and the domestic private banks has a positive sign, and the foreign bank has a positive sign. However, the ones that are we circled, is they, it means that they are same. Okay? The banks doesn't show any difference. The ownership structure doesn't matter. They are the domestic private and the foreign private banks slope variables are not statistically significantly different than the variable of the state bank. The state bank's reaction is positive, and the domestic banks and the foreign banks' reaction is insignificant or not significantly different than the reaction of the state banks. In this case, it is the in liable to focus, it's a negative reaction for the state banks and the domestic private bank's reaction is not statistically significant, not different than the state bank's. However, the foreign bank's reaction is different. Okay, the difference between the state banks and the foreign banks is a positive value. So foreign banks react positively to the liability focus. For, um, foreign banks return on asset performance reacts positively. Uh, the highlighted ones shows that for example, again, for the net interest margin asset focus, the state banks, as the state banks get more focused asset portfolios, their net interest margin is increasing. So there's a positive reaction. However, for the domestic banks, it's a negative reaction. 
But for a poor foreign bank, it's positive again, but it is statistically significantly different than the reaction of the state bank. Okay, it is less positive compared to the state bank. So all the highlights you will see actually refers to the less than state bank situation. So this is, again, negative reaction the state bank shows as the deposit portfolio becomes more focused. The, the state bank's uh, net interest margin decrease, the same situation for the domestic and the foreign banks, but they are statistically significantly different than the state bank's reaction. They are less negative. So I have to get quicker, unfortunately, I realize. So for the state-owned banks, we find that the focus on loans, liabilities, and the deposits cause a decrease in their profitability. So it can be because of the regulatory requirements for lending to special groups at low rates. These are special banks, actually. They have their duties. However, they are facing a competition from their liability side. So they have to pay, actually, a deposit rate that, is, that might be as high as the deposit rates on the other uh, domestic banks. On the other hand, if they focus on their assets, they have a higher profitability. It can be because of the fact that they are active participants in the government debt instruments markets and the interest income from these instruments are uh, high most of the time in Turkey. And they might also have the ability to generate non-interest income as well. For domestic banks, the as they more focus on their assets, loans, and the deposits, they have a higher return on assets, but they have a lower net interest margin. So the difference is the few generating activities. It looks like they are not earning from their interest, uh, interest generating activities, but they are very good at increasing their fee generating activities so that they just increase their return on assets. And as they are more geographically focused, there is going to be higher return on assets. They might have better uh, ability to use their business relationship, existing business relationships in the areas that they have larger branches. If we look at the foreign banks, we find that the higher focus is related with the higher profitability in general in most of the focus variables. So the foreign banks in Turkey are usually at a smaller scale. So the largest five banks, if you look at it, you will realize that for most of the time period, these are either the state banks or very famous, very old uh, domestic private banks we are talking about, not the foreign banks. So they're operating it usually at a smaller scale, so they have less number of branches, employees, total assets. Uh, for some of the foreign banks, actually, the geographic focus variable is one. So they have only one branch in one of the big cities in Turkey. Uh, they might have an advantage, however, to using the foreign situation. So they are basically a branch or a part of a big bank holding corporation, international bank holding corporation. So they, it might increase the advantage and they might generate some deposits even with a lower cost. We repeated this uh, equation and estimations this time by using the risk variables and we want to see how these focus variables affect the riskiness of the banks for different, again, groups of ownership. And again, the results uh, have the same logic. So if they are circled, it means that they are not statistically significant. If they are highlighted, basically we have a less than statistically significant or less negative than the state bank's situation. Uh, if you look at the credit risk, so non-performing loans to total assets, if you focus on assets and loans, you have a lower credit risk we find. So it looks like the banks can use their information advantage. Okay, as they have focused loan portfolios, they know their customers, their uh, borrowers better, so that they use this advantage so that they decreases the cost or they basically evaluate them better so decreases the riskiness, credit riskiness of the bank. For an exchange rate risk, we couldn't find any significant results. So the zeros you find, you see there, shows that there is no statistically significant uh, results. So the, there is no relationship with any focus variables. We couldn't find it with those estimations. However, the larger the size, higher the foreign exchange risk we find. So not surprising, most of the large banks are very active in the foreign exchange markets. So, and the foreign exchange liabilities and assets, they, are, they have a higher gaps so that 
we have a higher risk. And if you look at the capital adequacy, so it is basically total equity divided by risk weighted assets. So if this ratio increases, basically risk is decreasing. Okay, if we just follow the logic of the basal. So the ratio decreases uh, for the state banks as they hold more focused loan portfolios. So again, one reason may be the fake, fake one, me, one reason might be the fact that their risk weighted assets, which is the denominator for this variable, uh, might be increasing. So they are required to extend loans to some special areas. Maybe they are not better at credit evaluation because they are also state banks and they are usually too big to fail. The largest bank is the Zirat Bank we are talking about. So it might uh, cause an increase in their riskiness. Again, this ratio increases for private banks as they hold more focused loan portfolios. This time, uh, again, this might be the negative reaction from their risk-weighted assets, this time the risk-weighted assets might be decreasing. So they might actually be better at evaluating their borrowers. So they, are, they cannot trust the government like the state banks, so that they, might, they have to be better at evaluating their customers, so they might have a better credit evaluation as their, bank, uh, as their portfolios are more focused, loan portfolios are more focused. Uh, lastly, we look at the effect of focus variables on this uh, estimated component, so this liquidity and interest rate risk. We find that the higher deposit and geographic focus uh, decreases the risk. So reason can be the ability to have the customers in markets where the banks have existing business relationships. So if they are focused in some geographical areas or if they are focused with some kind of deposits, they may know their customers better. Okay, and the customers may also have more trust in those banks. So they don't want to rush and withdraw their money because they know the bank, they trust the bank, so that they might have a different and lower liquidity risk. Because Nuruja told me that I don't have time. I basically finished very quickly, I think. In general, what we found is that different bank groups have different focus and diversification effects on the performance and the risk. So the private banks, the domestic banks, and the foreign banks just behave differently compared to the state banks. They have statistically different results. We have statistically different results. The return on asset and the net interest margin profitability measures, again, react differently, especially for the domestic private banks. So the focus decision or diversification decision of these assets and the liabilities of the domestic banks shows different results, different kind of profitability. It increases the return on asset but decreases the net interest margin. So because the difference is the few generating activities, we suspect that the domestic private banks are so good at increasing their few generating activities. As a last comment, maybe a policy implication, we might say that the regulations that are basically aiming at increasing diversification doesn't have to be always value adding. It looks like there might be some benefits from a focusing in some different portfolios for the banking sector as well. Thank you very much.